everyone! It's finally time for October favorites. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. I know. I have some favorites, I have some unfavorites, and we're gonna cover them all. I don't know if you've seen them, you've probably seen them because like everyone's done it already. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to do it. It's the I Heart Drugstore tag. I was tagged by some of my favorite YouTubers, and I really can't wait to do it, and it's kind of like a drugstore favorites kind of tag. I'm definitely planning on doing it and I didn't want to do like a favorites video that included a whole bunch of drugstore stuff and then repeat myself, know what I mean? So I tried to kind of focus on like different stuff and let's get going. First off, just because I really like to make a whole lot of sense, I'm starting out with a drugstore foundation. Yes, I know, I'm not making any sense, but I had to include this because I kind of like rediscovered it. It's the Maybelline Superstay 24 hour makeup, Microflex formula, zero transfer, 24 hour wear. Ah! I got these kind of like a really long time ago. I'm sure this stuff is too old, but it's okay because I'm like totally running out of the flavor. Flavor was literally what I was thinking. The color that currently matches me. I do have two. The one that currently matches me is the classic beige and I also have nude and nude I think is just like one step lighter. The reason why I rediscovered these is because if you can imagine, I've never done a makeup collection video. I'm sure that I will in the future once I get to be a little bit more organized. If I did one now, I promise you'd be calling A&E to get me on hoarders and I don't feel like doing that right now. So we're gonna wait until I'm at least a little bit organized and everything is at least kind of in one area and then I'll do a makeup collection. But if you can imagine, I have a lot of stuff and foundation is included. And when I was trying to figure out what foundation I was gonna use for my Mia Wallace tutorial for Halloween, I don't know if you saw it, but if you didn't see it and you love Pulp Fiction, you might enjoy it. I know Halloween is over. I decided this nude color was one of the lighter foundations that would give me like a really good coverage and kind of like make me kind of all over a lighter color. And so I was just like, okay, whatever. Like I actually didn't really put that much thought into it. But anyway, I use this and I was like, whoa, why don't I use this anymore? This stuff is like kind of amazing. And you may or may not remember that for the past couple of months, I've been kind of having issues with my skin and having like flare-ups with my lupus and the spots and everything and I typically avoid a kind of like full cover or a medium to high coverage foundation but it's really what I've been needing. So I've gone back to this and I like it. It stays on so well. The coverage is so nice without being like Rrr. like I know uh, a lot of people hate on uh, Revlon Color Stay for being like too thick. And this one is thick too, but I was using Revlon Color Stay back then when I bought this and then when I switched to this and I was really, really impressed because it's not as heavy. So maybe if you're not liking Color Stay as much as you thought you would, maybe try this one and you might like it more. I feel like I'm going on and on and on about these, but they're really good. And I'm kind of thinking about doing a foundation tutorial type thing and using this kind of foundation. Tell me down below, do you wanna see that? Yay, nay, let me know, okay? Um, I don't know what I was really even talking about whenever I was talking about not doing a lot of drugstore stuff because I think I'm just doing a lot of drugstore stuff. Whoops. This is the e.l.f. fan brush. I'm pretty sure it's one of the dollar brushes that you can get. I've used it for different things like highlighter and highlighter, that's about it. But more recently, I figured out that it's really great for putting on setting powder, especially like under your eyes. Like typically people use like concealer under their eye and maybe like around your nose or something like that. You don't wanna like pack on the setting powder or whatever kind of powder you're using. And you also don't wanna like disturb the concealer that you just put on because you put it there for a reason because you need to conceal that stuff. And if you're just putting a translucent powder on, you don't want that to like wipe away. Defeats the purpose. So this brush is just like, it's dinky, okay? Like for a while I was like, oh, why did I even buy that like, it's like oh, highlighter, perfect, okay. Which it is really good for highlighter because it's like small, so you can get it in a small area. You're not just like, shine face immediately so that's good but 
for setting powder, it's really great because it's a really soft touch. It's pretty small. I can get it around the nose. You can just get the powder where you want it. And even if you do want to put it all over the face, which sometimes I do, slash most of the time, you can just dust it all over the face really lightly without disturbing your concealer and your foundation and all your hard work. So I don't know. I like it. It's soft. It's totally cheap. I almost kind of thought I need to go buy another one and use one for highlighter, one for setting powder because I feel like I can't cross contaminate the two. That's not healthy. So next up, I have this lip gloss by Hourglass. It's one of the extreme sheens and it's in the color Reflect. I got this one like way earlier this year and I've loved it pretty much the whole time. Yes, I am still 100% obsessed with the Revlon balm stains. Still wear them like almost every single day. And the reason why I brought this out is because I've gotten a lot of questions. Like every time I talk about wearing one of the balm stains, people ask me, well, what gloss did you put over it? What gloss did you put over it? I gotta say, usually I don't put a gloss over it because I find that they're like really moisturizing. Typically when I'm filming a video, I've just touched it up. It's shiny and beautiful and I don't really need a gloss. But when I do add a gloss with most colors, I just pop on this one. More than it is like a color, it's just really, really shiny and it feels amazing and it stays on like no other gloss I've ever tried. It's not sticky. It's like comfortable and I don't even know. It's just great. I suggest like going and trying to like test it out and see what it feels like at like Sephora or something. I don't think you can get like samples of lip gloss. I've never tried. You could probably try. They might like put it in a pot or something. I don't know. But hourglass is kind of expensive. So I always suggest like getting a sample or something. I like samples. It's gorgeous. Do you want to see me put it on? I'm actually not wearing it right now. But I don't mind putting it on. Amazing. All right, next up, a Wet n Wild palette that I talked about in my last favorites video, and I probably talked about it even before then. And more recently, I did a tutorial where I almost completely only used this palette. It is the matte palette. This one is the I Heart matte palette. This one was limited edition last year, and then this year they put it out again, a part of a different collection, and they called it something different. A very confusing name, actually. This one's I Heart Matte. Totally get it. I'm with it. I get why you called it that. But this one, drinking a glass of shine. What? No, doesn't make sense to me. Sorry, Wet n Wild. I love you, but really? Doesn't actually matter, but anyway. I'm bringing it back up this month because number one, yes, it is that amazing. Number two, I just did a tutorial and if you haven't seen it, I suggest you go see it because it's really easy and it's like mostly drugstore stuff, so why not? Number three, my Twitter friends are awesome because I was like so brokenhearted. I took a picture on Instagram because it was that big a deal to me. I broke my I Heart matte palette and I couldn't find the new ones anywhere and I was like okay time to get real because it was this dark brown color that I love so much and it's so integral in my life at this point and I've never been that successful with doing the whole like alcohol fix it trick but this time I did it because I was very very desperate and it did work I mean it still got like crack so maybe I didn't do it 100% right but it's holding up for now I just want to say thank you because you guys are awesome. I was like tweeting about it and like, well, I was tweeting about it for a long time because I couldn't find them and I wanted to buy a backup just because I wanted a backup. But then when I broke this one, I was like, all right, no more playing around. So big shout out goes out to at Tara Wood and at Sherry Joe. You guys are awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. And now I have two backups and I feel like I could be wearing Wet n Wild for the rest of my life. I can't ever do another tutorial because I'm just gonna be wearing this stuff forever. Probably not, but I love them and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, and here's my last favorite. Kind of a different kind of thing. It is an audiobook. If you didn't know, I'm kind of obsessed with audiobooks. And just recently, I had to do this huge crazy project where I had to like read all these books I didn't want to read and write all these papers and it was disgusting and horrible and I hated it. But since I've spent all this time around all these books, I found this book that I've been really wanting to read slash listen to and it was on sale at Barnes & Noble. It's Tina Fey, Glossy Pants. 
It was only five and a half hours long, so that means I listened to it in two days because I drive. It's not my job. I don't get paid to do it, but I drive almost all the time. But it was amazing, and I've actually almost listened to it two full times already. It's so funny. Like, I cried laughing more than once. I absolutely suggest it. It's, it's amazing. Amazing. I have many favorites in the audiobook world. Many, many. But this is definitely a new one. I love me some Tina Fey. Okay, so moving on from the favorites and on to the unfavorites. First off, I have this lip color. It's the Revlon Color Stay Ultimate Suede in number 35 Backstage. It is supposed to stay on your lips for like a bajillion hours and it kind of does, but it's not pretty by the end of it. I did like a whole review video on this lip color and so if you wanna hear like all the details, watch that video. I will put it somewhere for you to go watch it. Definitely watch the rest of this video and then go watch that one and then come back or whatever. Whatever you have time for, okay. The long wearing lip color and the outrageous claims. No more of you. I definitely liked the color, but the formula was just not all it was cracked up to be. Next up, I have this mascara. It is by Hard Candy and it's called 1000 Lashes Fiberized Lash Weave Mascara. Lash Weave. You heard correctly. I first heard about this whenever I did my Too Faced Better Than False Lashes Eyelash Extension Mascara review kind of thing. Do you remember that? I remember that. And a lot of people were like, oh, you can get like this exact same thing for like six bucks at Walmart. Like no problem. Like it's just the same, so much better. And I was like, uh, I feel gypped because that Too Faced mascara is kind of pricey. So the last time I was at Walmart, I was like, I think I should pick that up. I gotta say it is nice when you first put it on. It doesn't add the same level of volume and like crazy dust bunny lashes, if you remember that video. Doesn't do the exact same effect, but it does add like the little fibers. You can definitely tell a difference. But I've noticed every single time I've worn it throughout the day, it's flaked on me. And mascaras typically don't flake on me. So it was a very noticeable difference. And it would be like the little fibers, like the little mini baby wool things would like end up on my face or like on my nose or something. You can like see something black on your nose when you're like talking to someone and you're like, there's something on my nose. Uh, and then they think they've got something on their face. Yeah, well, mm, unfavorite. Last unfavorite I have is another mascara. In like every magazine you've ever read, it says that like Great Lash is like the best mascara ever created and it's the most favoritest one in all of America. And I've never liked it. But they did, I don't know if it was like limited edition, I don't know if they still have it, they did some colored ones. And for some reason, I was like, we should give that a chance. And I got the purple one, pop of purple. Totally didn't do it for me. I've tried it like multiple times. I've tried it over black mascara, tried it by itself. It's like so thin, so liquidy. Maybe I need to like wait for it to age. I'm sure I'm not the only one that definitely like loves mascara after it gets a little bit old. Like you have to like open it and like struggle with it for a while and kind of hate it for a while and then suddenly like a couple weeks later you love it. Why is it like that? Is there somewhere I can go to buy like slightly used mascara? That's a disgusting proposition, but I might go for it because I love mascara after it gets a little bit old, but I've had this one for a while. I've given it a chance and I still don't like it. Maybe if you know of a colored mascara that I would like, comment down below. I appreciate your advice. Okay, so that's everything. I know that was kind of long, but we lived. Maybe you might not have lived. I hope you did. So if you have any comments or questions or whatever, you can comment down below. You can also find me on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. On Twitter, it's at Leanne Says. On Facebook, it's facebook.com slash Leanne Says. And on Instagram, it's just Leanne Says. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone. Even though I do love drugstore stuff. Have I said that enough times? Just checking. I don't think I would wear that wig out. Anyway, I feel like I was just doing maybe like a speech at the Oscars. I don't know, I shop too much. So I actually just took out a favorite because it was kind of stupid. I've definitely dated guys that were like significantly shorter than me and 
I don't know, definitely more shorter than me than taller than me. Because, I don't know, like, looks are not my first thing. Like, I'm not like, oh, that guy's hot. I'm going to make a relationship with him. Like, 